Here's a demo of a Blender add-on I've been working on called Origamify. Running it on a mesh object creates a series of objects, one for each face, in a parent hierarchy such that folding along the x-axis corresponds to folding along the edge from the original mesh. And if we select all of these, and if you don't know, this is a great thing to know, but if you hold Alt and slide over any property, you can rotate, uh, you can change that property for each of them. So here I'm just rotating each object about its own local X axis, and it ends up folding back to itself. Here you can see that the face that it starts with is arbitrary. But if we go into edit mode and select, say, this bottom face and run it again, we can have it unwrap starting on a certain face. And you'll notice that we actually have to do this unwrapping, which is equivalent to finding a spanning tree of the face connectivity graph where each node in the graph corresponds to a face and they are connected if they share an edge. This spanning tree gives us a single parent hierarchy with a given root node seen here which maintains its local origin as whatever the origin of the original mesh object was and each child object gets its own axis on the midpoint of its edge uh, and the x-axis aligned such that moving in negative x rotates it back towards its fold angle also called the dihedral angle and you'll see the add-on will set some custom properties both the origami dihedral angle, which is the original angle between the two faces, and the original angle in absolute coordinates so that any time we want to get back to that shape, we can. And there's a built-in operator, well not built-in, I add an operator called origami fold, which just goes through and sets the local x back to whatever this original angle is and we can call unfold and it will add back that dihedral angle to get it to be flat again. So let's look at how this unwraps on a more complicated shape. We'll use the built-in add-on for regular solids and one thing to note is if we look at this mesh there's a bunch of extra edges that cut through our polygon faces to get rid of those select all your faces go to just hit X and uh, limited dissolve and that'll get rid of those contained edges and we might want to select one of these faces like say that one and now if we call origamify you can see that we are unwrapping our mesh now the unwrapping for this mesh is non-deterministic and currently not guaranteed to be a proper net that is once it's unwrapped there might be intersecting faces uh, once it's been unfolded. There is an option here for changing how the spanning tree is computed which is between breadth first and depth first and you can see breadth first kind of ends up more like a flower where the depth of each path is roughly equal versus depth first which tries to explore as far away from itself as possible. And this unfold just gives you the option to unfold right away. This last option, constrain root, 
adds an axlimic rotation constraint so that the root face is always zero. Well, let me demo that now. That's useful if you always have your entire hierarchy selected and want to rotate all of the faces at the same time, but that uh, rotation constraint keeps the original one locked in place. So you can see this is already a pretty nice effect. And one thing that we can also do is use the built-in animation tools that I've added which let you given a starting object, the root in this case, we can add animations to unfold the faces in a couple different ways and either fold them or unfold them. The options here are altogether breadth first, depth first, and levels and those correspond to how the keyframes are added to do the animation. So we can try this again with depth first. Breadth first. And levels. And all these do is add keyframes for you. So you can mix and match, add your own, however you want. One thing we might want to do here is end up folding this again. We could add some keyframes for all of them. And then if we select one of these of the children, and call animate on it, only it, you can see that the other nodes from its parent aren't affected by this animation. And so we could choose when we want to unfold each of the pieces. So that would just be for that chain or that branch. And the last thing that I've been working on that's not quite done yet and gives some more meaning to the original name is the actual origami part starting with a flat face. So one thing that does work currently that we can see is if we have something like a simple pleat fold We'll select one of these, this face as the root face. Calling origamify on this does work pretty nicely. So rotating each X ends up curling this like a cylinder. And, but there's one other type of rotation that we might want to achieve. And to do that, we need to look at the normals of these faces. And you can see that they're all... Okay, so we can see the normals of each of these is pointing up. And so Origamify will actually look at the direction of the normals to uh, figure out which way it needs to orient the x-axis so here, after flipping half of the normals and rerunning Origamify, or 
you can see that we actually get the pleat fold that we're familiar with. And you can of course add uh, a driver to these rotations or animate them in whatever way you want. Um, it's up to you. And so the last thing that's a true work in progress is more complicated origami shapes. And those become a issue because the those shapes don't have a a nice parent hierarchy that we can use to set up the relationships. So let's create this fairly classic origami tessellation pattern. And then as before, we'll flip these normals. And if you're familiar with origami, these correspond to whether you're going to have a mountain fold on the edge or a valley fold on the edge. And if you've ever folded this pattern, you'll know that this edge right here, these two edges, don't actually need to be here. But for this tool to work properly, we have to have it so that the parent hierarchy can be created. And so calling origamify on this will create the hierarchy we want. But we'll see that if we select all of the faces and rotate them, we get this separation right here. But we do get the mountain and valley folds that we wanted. So all we have to do, though, is Yeah, there we go. If we take just a subset of the faces to rotate about, then we maintain the shape that we're after. And folding this in real life gives you exactly this shape. So that looks correct. But so normally this tessellation pattern is extended uh, many times, both horizontally and vertically. And the interaction between all of those poses a challenge. And the next thing I'm looking at is just using the physics simulations to add rotation hinges between each edge. Um, or animating them as mesh data, and you would get that information as an alembic file that you could then plug into the animation system. Well, I think that about covers it, so hope that's useful.